The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, at another session of the uh, knowledge uh, sharing uh, sessions. Um, today we have uh, Giuseppe Trapani uh, from the uh, Simulia, um, the technical support organization. He is uh, the uh, Simulia R&D application manager uh, from Xflow. Today, uh, Giuseppe would be talking about uh, the uh, hydro tire hydroplaning problem um, and uh, how Xflow is uh, approaching those kind of uh, uh, problems. Mm, about uh, the logistics, um, this presentation is being recorded and uh, the presentation and the slides will be posted uh, in the simulation support community after uh, in a few days. Um, if you have any questions uh, to uh, Giuseppe's presentation, please uh, write those questions uh, using uh, the questions panel. Uh, I will read out those questions uh, after uh, uh, the presentation is over. If you want to ask the questions yourself, please do uh, indicate the same uh, uh, in the questions panel and I will uh, unmute you after the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, Giuseppe, we are all waiting to hear what, what you have to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jigan. Um, well, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for joining us today and um, in this webinar. Uh, good morning or good afternoon depends on your uh, time zone. Um, as Jigan said, today I'm going to show you uh, the simulation workflow uh, that we developed in uh, Xflow to do um, hydro planning of tires. Okay. Um, as the title says, it's an FSI simulation for structure interaction. Um, so I'm going to steal some of the information from the Abacus guy as well, and I'll show you a little bit of both a structural and hydrodynamic world. Okay. In terms of content for the presentation, well, I'll start quickly with um, an introduction of um, Simulex, uh, what the tool is and what we use it for in our daily job. And then I'll move to the modeling of the rolling tires, so the uh, type of simulation that we're trying to uh, tackle in here from both the structural and the fluid dynamics point of view, okay? And as I said earlier, it's a fluid structure interaction problem. Um, so I'll introduce, um, well, general knowledge about FSI and in the specifics, how we're using the uh, technology that we have, the co-simulation engine in Abacus uh, to perform fluid structure interaction um, simulations, okay? I'll finish off with some post-processing of um, a baseline test case that we run on this problem, a few insights on the uh, hydro planning uh, problem, and then as we said earlier, we have a question and answer, so don't be shy and write your question in the uh, question panel of your WebEx or go to Mindic, okay? Perfect, so let's start um, with a quick introduction to Simulia Xflow, um, which is a part of the CFD offering of uh, Simulia since uh, December 2016, so a couple of years. Um, it's a code or is a technology based on lattice Boltzmann methods, okay? Um, so inherently he's um, taking information from uh, distribution functions of particles. So there is a particle-based um, approach, although it's not actually um, a particle-to-particle -particle interaction, okay? It's a bit more sophisticated, but there is still this content of particle uh, dynamics into the software. Um, what it really does is solves um, a different set of equation. You, we are all used to the Navier-Stokes equation, but we're trying to solve um, a different set of equation, which at the end sum up to the same macroscopic uh, quantities, okay, pressure, velocity, and solving the Navier-Stokes in continuum um, fluid flow. And the key advantage is uh, what you can see in the slides, especially in um, LES made affordable. So it's a quite efficient way of doing LES simulations, so large eddy simulations, um, where we tend to solve the large eddy of the vortices and we model the small ones. Okay, um, as you can see from the slides from the video, um, it's a solver that we use, a uh, simulation tool that we use a lot uh, to solve transient and unsteady phenomena, like the um, uh, aircraft approach to an uh, aircraft carrier, as you can see in the, in the video. And that is because the cost of doing that type of simulation with um, other tools, it's uh, really expensive. So Xflow brings uh, this efficiency in the 
actually solving LES uh, problems. Um, we don't stop only on the solver itself. Um, we actually have worked a lot, a lot to have a user-friendly graphics interface. So the GUI FX flow is not really uh, complicated. It's actually really intuitive. And it's not only an add-on, it's actually um, a kind of, um, well, allow it for the user to do setups and uh, a simulation in a really short runtime. Um, in order to start from geometry to simulation, um, the user really just takes a few minutes and it's really intuitive. And there are not so many inputs parameters that you have to to change and set up for running um, an Explo case. And that makes it um, a perfect tool for not only a really experienced uh, designer or simulation um, tool engineering, uh, but also for less experienced designer or um, designers at preliminary stage. So it's a tool that can span from different um, design stages and different profiles in a company. Um, what else? Well, we have a few inputs that we are always putting in the Xflow. One of the key uh, development that we have is, for example, the adaptive refinement regions or adaptive uh, algorithm. Um, as you can see in the videos, again, we have um, a plane trying to land in a carrier. And as you can see, the wake behind the plane is actually uh, refined. And the refinement is automatically calculated by the software. So in a way, the user doesn't have to uh, a priori know the important area of the domain where we need more resolution. Uh, the software will automatically uh, detect those for you and will actually apply more refinement in the regions where it's needed, therefore uh, freeing a little bit the user from the setup of a, a bulky case, but also guaranteeing that the results that we get out are consistent. Okay. Um, the bottom part that we wanted to highlight here is um, how we do modeling of really complex geometry. Um, and again, as you can see, in this case, we have really big and complex geometries. And the way we handle walls in Xflow allows us to deal with those in a really easy way. Um, since we have basically a meshless approach, approach, we do not have a mesh as defined for Navistock's code. Um, we can handle those complex geometries really, really easily. Okay. Now that's kind of introduction to the software itself. Um, now I wanted to show you some of the application that we use the software for. Um, so the scope of um, Xflow and in general, what's the scope of LBM methods, okay, lattice Boltzmann methods. Um, I'll start with the typical ones, so the most common ones like um, transient aerodynamics. Uh, so we want to do prediction of uh, performance of um, vehicles in terms of aero design, styling, drag lift prediction of uh, such vehicles. And that's um, a field where uh, LBM is actually um, growing a lot, both in market share and in uh, application in um, research and uh, development. Um, but then I, we can actually push that further. As we can see from the video, we can take not only a transient simulation of a vehicle, but actually we can then try and push it further to um, analyze, for example, overtaking maneuvers. Um, so what's the load on the car overtaking a lorry? and what's the dynamic loads which is applied on the on the vehicle and what the driver can actually expect when he does this type of maneuver and what's the influence of one week uh, of the lorry, of course, on the, um, on the car itself. Okay, so we start to complicate a little bit the setup or the simulation, um, but we're gonna see that later on, probably in the GUI and export GUI, there is not really a complex uh, setup for the user. Um, it's made easy even if it's a really complicated uh, simulation. Um, pushing it forward, we can calculate forces, so aerodynamics limit, but we can also um, directly get our acoustics response from LBM methods from Xflow. Um, in this case, we can get unsteady pressure directly from the simulation itself. So we can get not only the forces, but also what the noise level are in those um, uh, conditions. So noise uh, levels for the vehicle, for example, while it's overtaking the lorry, okay? So we have a tool that can be used also for acoustics um, simulation directly. And the next two points are actually uh, um, a little bit of the expansion of the standard lattice Boltzmann meter to, um, well, more complex physics rather than geometries. Um, so as we can um, see from the top uh, video, we have um, characteristics, wake of um, 
fin mast class or Olympic boats. And you can see, well, there is a lot of influence of um, wakes of one boat crossing the wake of the other when we have these types of and crossing of different um, well, lines of the uh, one of the vessel. But of course, it's also important to try and uh, predict what the free surface uh, motion will be. So what's the actual um, impact of the boat hulls on the sea um, water itself? And that is when we use our um, free surface or multi-phase flow uh, simulation X flow. So then we go from only one phase to multiple phase or to a free surface simulation where we can actually simulate those type of scenarios. So free surface flow, water, liquids, and in this case, uh, hull hydrodynamics. Okay, um, but that's just one of the example of the free surface. <clears throat> we have main applications. Um, some are listed in the slides. So we have oil lubrication, uh, wading, tanks sloshing, um, some crazy like those ones that we're seeing in the video. So we have um, white, um, body in white painting. So we have basically um, um, a frame of a car being dragged into a a pool of, well, in this case, it's um, paint. And you can see that you can do all this complex um, geometry and simulation all within the same software, which is um, uh, a simulator explorer. Uh, if we move to different industry from the automotive, then we can see applications in um, food industry or products, appliances. Uh, so in this case, we have a free surface simulation um, coupled with a non newtonian fluid. Uh, for example, to mimic and simulate toothpaste. And uh, um, if you can see the, the video, we're actually simulating also the squeezing action of the uh, toothpaste. So we have some deformable objects in the simulation as well. And I've talked about that um, later on during the presentation because it's a key parameter or key feature for our tire hydroplaning simulation. Okay. Um, so far we've seen applications of free surface, single phase flow, some multi-phase um, application. Um, and lots of those simulations already had moving bodies involved. So some of them, um, vessels, for example, of the hulls were um, crossing um, the other hulls, aircraft landing, squishing of toothpaste. Um, we have a really strong ability in XFlow to handle uh, complex moving parts and free structure interaction problems. And that's another example where this time we are simulating a helicopter uh, engine valve. And the main difference compared to the other results is that here we have a rigid body dynamic object, which is the purple um, shape in the video. And that is actually moving as a result of the forces applied on it. Okay, so in this case, the motion is a result of the simulation. And that's again, a really strong um, well, capability of the software of XFlow um, to simulate those type of scenarios and instabilities that can arise in this um, type of um, devices. As we can see from the, from the video, we have some instability at a specific inlet mass flow rate. Okay, of course we can push um, those capabilities to the limit and that's what we're gonna do today. And um, we're gonna couple some of these um, fixed motion, so rolling of tires with some deformable uh, objects, which basically will come from Abacus. And we are gonna try to tackle a really complex problem, which is entire hydro planning or aqua planning, where we have a combination of free surface flow, uh, hitting the tire, deforming the tire, and then we're reducing what's the contact patch of the tire in this condition, okay? So now that we have um, kind of general idea of what XFlow is, uh, let me introduce the two models that we're gonna use, um, well, actually to model the rolling tire problem. I'll start with the structure and then I'll continue into the fluid dynamics model. So for the structural modeling, um, I'm actually borrowing some slides from some colleagues. I'm not a, an Abacus expert, but we start modeling our tire using two really simple mesh. One is a 2D axis symmetric model, and basically we're modeling in there all the fibers and the different layers of the rubber of the of the tire. And 1B is um, a single thread pitch, so we have a reproducible constant thread pitch that we can then multiply in. Uh, periodically create our 360 um, rolling tire. Okay, so those two inputs are then put together. We have a 
symmetric um, revolution of the mesh 1A. We attach the uh, single thread with the Tyco strain to the um, periodic sector that we uh, just created. And once we have that periodic sector, we can then do the first step, which is actually mounting that on the rim and inflate the tire, okay? And that's the first stage um, of our abacus simulation. So we have the first um, uh, results, which is actually plotted in this video, where we have the mounting of the rim and also the inflating action of um, in the thread. Okay, here we're plotting just a room misses stress to empathize which ones are the area that are going under stress during this process. Um, but that's mainly to actually form the tire, it's not um, well limited in stress, let's say. Okay, after this step, now we have a periodic sector which is actually mounted and inflated. And we need now to um, well create a symmetric model. So in order to have a periodic full 3D model, we're going to sweep around this periodic um, single thread pitch. We're going to create a full 3D model of the, of the tire. And then we're going to simulate um, the contact with the roads. So we're going to get the footprint of the tire. And we're going to proceed with a steady state transport analysis. So we're going to roll the tire in steady state um, transport uh, simulation. And that will give us the solution that we see in the next slides, where we have the tire now fully completed um, in 360 degrees. And on the uh, left hand side of the plot, so the slides, you can see uh, the creation of the footprint. So we're applying the weight uh, that corresponds to that specific tire and the tire is deforming under the weight and is uh, getting in contact with the road surface. Okay, so that's the footprint creation. And then on the right hand side, we have the SST, SST sorry, simulation in Abacus, where we have the steady state transport um, simulation of the specific tire that we already had uh, deformed uh, with a specific footprint. Okay, what I'm plotting on the left hand side is actually contact pressure. So the higher the color, so the brighter the color, and the, um, the higher is the pressure that we're applying. And of course, in this plot, we are actually checking what's the contact between the tire and the road itself. So that's why we have high contact pressure in this area. Okay, and that's step um, two. Well, step three of our abacus simulation. So now we went from two um, to these uh, meshes into a full 3D representation of the tire. And all of that has been performed in this specific case in abacus standard. So now what we actually have to do is to import the 3D uh, deformed tire into abacus explicit. And then we are going to use abacus explicit to do our cost simulation um, with Xflow. So now we need to um, introduce the fluid domain in our simulation in order to be able to take into account the loads which are transferred from the fluid um, to the structure. Okay, so that's um, the structure modeling of the tire. And now let me show you the um, fluid dynamic modeling um, of the rolling tire. Okay, so that's the correspondent part in uh, Xflow. And I'll start first um, just describing the geometry setup and how we set up the geometry in uh, Xflow. Okay, um, as we've seen in the previous case with the structural uh, setup, we have a tire which is basically fixed on the horizontal axis and then is pushed on the road. So we're trying to mimic um, the same condition in Xflow. So the um, geometry that we import from Abacus, and we're going to see how that is actually happening. Um, it's going to be fixed on the horizontal axis and the tire will rotate on this fixed position and the rotation is actually coming from the abacus model itself. So Xflow will not um, actually have any requirements on the geometry. The user doesn't have to set any rotational speed because that will come basically from the abacus file. Okay, that is actually true also for the deformation itself. So the deformation of the patch which is in contact with the roads um, will come directly from Abacus. So both the rotation of the tire and the deformation will come from Abacus. Xflow will only identify those as a moving object. And the moving body techniques that we have seen in action in the previous video will basically take care of all this motion and will simulate the moving, rolling, uh, deformable tire 
in, uh, in our domain, in our fluid domain. As you can see from the picture, we have basically an external box which defines the fluid domain region. And we are not going to use the whole domain as an initial um, well, field domain. We are actually going to use a free surface solver in our simulation. Okay, which means that um, instead of having a full domain uh, filled with a liquid, um, we have actually an initial domain specified in some part of the fluid domain, and that is going to be a tract during the simulation. And the free surface, which is basically the boundary between the fluid and the void region, will evolve during the simulation and the solver will track this evolution, okay? So that's one of the specific, uh, sorry, specific solvers in Xflow. Uh, of course, you've seen some of the videos already on the single phase, which is basically dealing with a one fluid taking the whole space of the fluid domain. That's an example of a free surface where we have still one single phase model, but that model can actually evolve with a free surface tracking approach. And of course, the extension of that would be a multi-phase approach where we take into account both the liquid, and in this case, water, and the air phase um, in a one single simulation. But for such a problem, the air contribution is quite negligible. So we are actually um, just considering the free surface uh, water approach. Okay, as we can see in the slide, we have um, an initial volume height. So we initialize the flow field up to a point close to the tire. And the initial height is um, 10 millimeters. So we have an initial water height of 10. And since we have a fixed horizontal rotating tire, we need to set the velocity actually of the moving car on the opposite uh, side of the moving fluid. Uh, therefore, we have an inlet velocity of 70 kilometers per hour, uh, which is gonna basically um, input velocity into our domain fluid water at 10, uh, 70 kilometers per hour. And we also have a velocity condition on the road itself. Okay, just to mimic the fact that we have a rolling tire so that the road will actually have the same uh, velocity of the of the water going through. Okay, so the orange uh, plots or the orange surfaces are indicating the specific boundary condition that we're applying in the X-flow model. Okay, so we have water coming in, a specific velocity. Of course, we're gonna have a few outlet conditions um, in this case, we have the top and the rear surface, again, the orange uh, surface on the, on the video. And those basically will take care of, um, well, basically expelling the water that is coming through the domain after it's been, um, well, it's hitting the tire and it's been expelled by the tire threads, okay. Um, finally, we have a free slip wall conditions on the side, uh, which means that we're trying to mimic frictionless contact of water to the walls and uh, trying to keep the water height um, a constant throughout uh, the simulation. So not having any leakage on the, on the side of the domain is a kind of way of mimicking a part hole in a, in a road um, without any effect on the fluid itself um, for friction uh, layers, okay. And that's the entire setup in Xflow. Um, so once we have the geometry and the external domain, we only have to uh, set up a few boundary conditions and the initial condition of the fluid height. And that's it. Xflow will take care of actually um, rotating the tire and evaluating at each um, time step the new position of the tire. Now, the actual tire position and the formation comes from a structural solver. So that's where we start to introduce our FSI uh, free structure interaction uh, methodology. And I just want to highlight a few key parameters and key concepts that we're using in our simulation. And I know that the development is a little bit wider than what I'm showing today. So I'm just going to focus on what is really important for the case that we're analyzing so far. Okay. So for FSI, it's a little bit generic in terms of uh, definition. So fluid structure interaction can be any type of fluid structure interaction. What I'm focusing right now is actually the formable bodies uh, interaction, which means that the tire that we're dealing with uh, will actually be deformed by the uh, forces that are applied on that. And that is not a single solution in Xflow. 
Okay, for rigid body, we do have an X flow and coupled single solution, but for um, deformable bodies, we need to rely on some tools which are probably more validated than anything that we can put in Xflow. So what we're gonna do in this uh, um, approach is actually using some of the coupling techniques of Abacus, the co-simulation engine, and couple Xflow and Abacus to do a deformable body FSI, okay? And with these slides, I'll try to explain what the uh, mechanism of transferring loads and um, deformation is in our FSI application, okay? So if I start with an Xflow simulation, and I have my tire in there, and my fluid domain. Um, I run a few time steps and then I get my loads on the entire tire or all the geometries I have in my Xflow simulation, okay? Um, at some point, the co-simulation engine, the CAC, will basically extract those loads from the Xflow um, simulation. So basically we'll call Xflow and gather those loads information and we'll send those loads to Abacus, okay? As you can see, in between Xflow and Abacus, there is a coupling surface, which we define, and that is the, basically, interface between the two tools. So that's the only part that the tools are sharing in terms of geometric definition, okay? Which means that you can have really complex geometries in Xflow, completely different geometries in Abacus, and you can only share part of the geometry, which is the relevant part, okay? As we can see in this case, the X-Flow tire geometry is basically exactly the coupling surface. It's, there is a one-to-one -one match, uh, but it's not the same for Abacus. We have some sidewalls and hub wheels in Abacus, which are not really relevant for this case. So we don't consider that as a coupling surface, and we neglect that part when we are coupling with X-Flow. But of course, those tires, well, those geometries are active in the Abacus simulation, okay? So if we go, to Abacus, now we have um, an Abacus uh, solution. So we have loads that come from Xflow, loads which are applied in Abacus, the tire deforms. We can then um, basically ask the co-simulation engine to get displacement and velocity of the nodes, which are defined in the coupling surface. And the co-simulation engine brings back those uh, displacements and um, velocities back to the Xflow simulation. Okay, so in this case, now Xflow sees a different geometry, either rotated or displaced or um, deformed, and will perform again another uh, simulation. Of course, this loop basically continues until the simulation time is uh, reached, so the end of the simulation, both Xflow or Abacus is reached, and then we're going to have a complete um, couple simulation result. Now, the the way the simulation engine handles all this transfer, and especially the frequency at which the simulation engine handles this transfer is key to the simulation process, and it's um, something which has been developed um, over the, the past years. And that is what I wanted to show in the next slides when we talk about uh, synchronization algorithm or negotiation methods, and that's a whole part of the process that need to be defined in order to exchange correctly loads and deformation between the two softwares, okay? And um, that's not a complete, um, basically, description of the process. I'm just showing a really peculiar example. So if you want more information, um, you can either ask later on or send a few emails and then we get back at you, okay? Um, what I'm trying to depict in this picture is the actual co-simulation process. And we have, well, the two tools, Xflow on the top and Abacus at the bottom, and our time axis, which is the evolution in time, okay? Um, remember that both Abacus and Xflow in this case are explicit tools, so they are time marching, basically, in time, okay? And we have two vertical bars, which indicates uh, synchronization points which is a point at which the co-simulation engine will ask either Abacus for deformation or Xflow for loads, okay? The other hypothesis that we're doing in this case is that the Abacus time step is smaller than the Xflow time step. Um, that's not usually the case, or might be actually um, a different case, uh, but for this specific analysis, um, that's what happens. That's uh, what the stable uh, time step are actually coming up to be. So I'll show this specific case, um, but then we can generalize for any other case, okay? 
Um, so if I run my simulation, so I'm the really uh, beginning of my uh, co-simulation analysis, and I run Abacus <clears throat> with my fixed time step or my uh, stable time step for the explicit simulation, and I haven't reached yet a synchronization point. So basically the co-simulation engine doesn't trigger any information exchange between the tools, okay? So I'll then run another time step of my Abacus explicit simulation, and now actually got to a point where um, the co-simulation engine is triggered, and we have now a synchronization point. Um, therefore, the co-simulation engine will grab uh, displacement and velocity from the Abacus simulation, and will send it um, to the x flow solver. Now, as you can see, we are going kind of back in time um, in this process. So that's a gas seedle negotiation methods, which tends to guarantee that the two tools are um, in synchronous, um, that displacement and loads are roughly in um, equilibrium, okay? Uh, other methods try to run the software in parallel and exchange information on specific um, time steps, um, but that's not what we are um, um, using in this uh, specific simulation, okay? So now that we have the displacement and velocity that comes from Abacus, Xflow will read this in. We'll basically deform our geometry. So now we have a new deformed geometry and we can evaluate our uh, flow field. Okay, so Xflow will advance in time. It would reach a single insertion point. And here we are assuming that the time steps are kind of multiple. And since we reach um, a synchronization point, the co-simulation engine will grab from Xflow the new sets of loads, which are a result of our deformation being applied to Xflow and the hydrodynamic loads coming up from the Xflow simulation. Okay, now this new sets of load is sent to Abacus and Abacus will now perform the simulation and basically we are back to square one where we are starting a, in this a slide. Okay, so that's the type of negotiation methods or synchronization algorithm used in, um, in the studies that I'm presenting in, uh, in today's webinar. Okay, now before going into some of the results I wanted to show you, I quickly wanted to, um, well, pass through some of the validations uh, that we perform on this uh, co-simulation um, Xflow Abacus and also touch a little bit base on both the solver, the single phase and the free surface application. So on the left-hand side of the slide, you can see, <clears throat> sorry, one of the specific uh, benchmark for FSI uh, simulation, which is the Horan Turek case. Um, that's a flexible bar and a cylinder, and basically we have a self-induced um, excitation of the shedding vortex from the cylinder, which are basically amplified by the motion of the of the flexible bar and those characteristics, uh, frequency basically are similar. So they get into a resonance regime where the cylinder is exciting the bar and the bar is exciting the cylinder uh, vortex shedding. And as you can see from the table, which is underneath the, the video, the results are close to the reference, which is again a numerical simulation. So it's not an experimental results, uh, but it's roughly a 5% five, 5 sorry, delta. Uh, if we compare the uh, tip displacement um, of this configuration. The simulation has been performed in single phase, so the whole domain is filled with, I think it's glittering in this case, so it's uh, just one phase. On the right hand side, we instead we see um, a free surface application where we have a thumb break on a flexible bar. So we have an initial height of water, a column of water, then well, under the effect of gravity, just drops and hits the bar which is placed um, well, a few meters apart. And what we are trying to track in here is again the displacement of the midpoint of the beam tip. And we're comparing again with other numerical tools, um, but the match is um, pretty much uh, perfect on this case. So we have um, both a single phase and a free surface validation case um, that well, gives us some confidence in applying that um, co-simulation methodology to um, more design um, oriented cases like the tire planning. Okay, <clears throat> perfect. Um, that concludes 
it's kind of the introduction to the problem uh, part. Uh, so the next slides are focusing more on the results on an example case that we run. And all the results that we're seeing um, in this presentation are IP free. So those are models that we use internally to check um, the workflow. Um, so there is no confidential data being, uh, being shared. Okay, and the first set of results I want to show you is actually a video of the results of the co-simulation process, um, which shows on the left-hand side the XFLOW simulation and on the right-hand side the Abacus results. Okay, and what we're seeing is on the XFLOW side is more a plot of the vorticity of the flow field. So blue in a way it's low vorticity and um, white is high vertical flow. And on the right-hand side in Abacus we have the contact pressure. Okay, so what's the pressure between the tire and the road itself? Uh, we can start to see some interesting pattern. Um, so from the X-Flow um, simulation, we can see, well, the water hits the tire. And there is some of the flow that, of course, goes on the on the sides of the tire, so sideways after hitting the, the tire. And that's why we create those uh, high vertical regions on the side, um, which tend to look like periodic vortex is being shed. Okay, but there is also lots of fluid going through the threads, especially at the very beginning of the simulation, lots of the fluid of the water is being uh, expelled by the central threads, which run horizontally. Um, but on the deformation start kicking in, so the pressure that loads, the pressure loads that um, builds up underneath the tire, pushes the tire up and deforms the tire, then more and more water is actually going um, underneath the tire and that is basically pushing the tire away from the road okay and that is what we are seeing in the contact pressure in the abacus side so if we focus on this video uh, we can see that at the very beginning of the simulation we have well a full patch which is in contact with the road and as the simulation go um, advances in time go on and um, that patch is actually reduced because we have water that it's deforming the threads and that is pushing the threads away from the road. I just wanted to uh, zoom in a little bit on the, on the case so that we can start to appreciate some of the deformation patterns that we have um, localized in the threads. And I'll start again with the XFLOW side where we can see well some of these <clears throat> deformation patterns, especially on the first part of the tire where we have probably the highest pressure being imposed by, by the fluid. And as you can see, there is um, a kind of oscillating behavior of fluid deforming the tire, and then being released and deforming again the tire. So that indicates indicates a really unsteady nature of um, the problem. And um, all this um, oscillating behavior is, of course, caused by the unsteadiness of the simulation itself. On the abacus sides, it's probably hard to capture, but if you check on the thread sides, you're gonna see some of the deformation. Um, that comes in, especially in this region, where the thread change um, shape. And this again, due to the fact that there is water um, contact uh, with the threads that not only deforms the threads, but as we're gonna see later on also, um, change the vertical position of the tire. Okay, so those are qualitative analysis of the, of the flow field. Um, but of course, we can do some more quantitative analysis. So what does this result in? Um, well, if we plot the road reaction force, which is basically the integral force of the pressure, the contact pressure on the road, well, we can see a really peculiar plot, which is uh, we have an initial uh, force that is, of course, um, then reduced to almost zero during the simulation. Okay, what does that mean? Well, as we've seen earlier, um, the contact patch basically reduces over time. And of course, the force that the tire can actually exercise on the road is reduced considerably during the simulation, okay? So the conclusion of these uh, specific plots is that the tire is indeed aquaplaning in this case. So we'll not, um, the driver will not have any control on the, on the vehicle itself because there is basically no contact patch left uh, that can actually transfer that information to the road. Okay, as I have uh, um, quickly um, anticipated earlier, the second effect, so we have one of the effects is the deformation of the threads locally, okay. 
The second effects of um, the fluid structure interaction is actually that we have um, small displacement or vertical displacement of the tire of the center hub. Okay, on the X direction, um, is quite gradual in this simulation, but you can really see it when we jump the video from the beginning to the end, or from the end to the start of the video. There is a quick jump of the tire up and down. And that is again due to the pressure that the uh, water is applying on the tire. And indeed, we have some restraint on the vertical displacement of the of the tire due to gravity or to stiffness of the suspension system. Uh, but still, the force is applied, uh, but the water uh, still manages to uh, move the tire around. On the other video on the right hand side in Abacus, what um, we're trying to highlight in here is actually the displacement on the out of the plane axis, so U2, which is basically the Y axis coming out of the um, plane of the, of the slide. And we have, in this case, uh, red color highlights positive displacement and U basically is um, small negative displacement. And I want to focus especially on this area where we can see that there is um, a reduction of that uh, displacement on the Y, okay. And in order to focus a bit more, I just uh, zoom in so we can see that um, with a close-up look. Okay, <clears throat> so we can see that as the simulation evolves, well, the initial contact patch, which was um, the footprint that we did in the steady state transport analysis, is actually released a little bit so that the formed um, tire sh shape on the side, it actually get pushed back into more uh, smooth um, plot or smooth deformation on the side and that's why we have a reduction of that deformation because we have a pressure built up on the underneath of the uh, of the tire so in the interface road tire there is some pressure that builds up and pulls the basically the tire pulls the tires up releasing some of this deformation of the tire and that's really clear in the reduction of the u2 displacement in this region Okay, on the X flow side, um, in this case, I'm just plotting a few cutting planes of um, static pressure. Um, so the red color mean that the static pressure is high. So we have really high contribution. Blue, it's a lower pressure, okay. And the center cutting plane is actually going through one of the uh, threads of the horizontal thread. So we have flow that goes all the way. The one on the side instead are actually crossing the threads, the um, horizontal threads. So the flow will actually leave the, um, the tire from the side. So that's why we don't have a continuum stream. Okay, but we can see that, well, there is of course a lot of pressure built up when the water hit the tire, um, lots of unsteadiness and a few pressure waves that travel around the domain. But then when, once the water leaves them, the region of high pressure, which is the compression of the tire, and the pressure is released, and water can leave the, the region at a much lower uh, pressure. Okay, so all this pressure built up in there is what deforms the threads and what releases this U2 displacement on the right hand side. It's also interesting to check on the uh, Abacus video this region of the, of the deformation um, field where we have basically. Um, a thread which is the form up to where the water is actually going through the patch and then the deformation is released so there is not the form uh, threads in this case because in there still the patch is in contact with the road surface so you can really identify uh, different regions of um, deformation in the in threads and that has been seen in literature so we have different regions of um, deformation in the tire that can lead to different aqua planning phenomena or aqua planning stages let's say Okay. So again, qualitative videos and flow visualization, <clears throat> but now we can extract actually useful information like what is the displacement of the wheel center. So if we track that during our abacus simulation, then we can see that our wheel displacement is, well, considerable is seven millimeters. Um, sorry, I think I missed the units in this plot by it's millimeter. Um, so it's seven millimeter up. So we have both the effect of deforming the threads and moving the tire up, which are contributing to the effect of um, aqua planning or hydro planning our, our tire. Okay, and before finishing the presentation, I'll leave um, 
and the um, WebEx open for Q&A. I just wanted to have a quick example of how these tools or this workflow can now be used to not only predict, but also um, aqua planning, but also change design and operating condition and see how consistent is the entire different operating condition or how different threads can behave um, at the same operating condition. Um, we've done some studies. What I'm going to show you here is only an operating condition change. So we're changing the velocity of the fluid um, while the rotating tire as well from 70 to 50 kilometers per hour. So we are reducing the speed basically at which we are driving the car when we encounter a, um, a pothole. Okay. And the only modification that we have to do in uh, XFlow is changing the value of the uh, fluid velocity at the inlets and uh, at the road surface. And of course, we have to adjust the abacus file to take into account that the rotation now it's a 50 kph, it's not a 70 kph. Okay. <clears throat> so now applying the same co simulation workflow, same simulation results, um, we obtain these sets of results, which is the, the blue curve. So the red curve represents what I showed you earlier the 70 kilometers per hour uh, simulation. And the blue one represents the lower velocity one. Okay, so what we can get from these plots is the um, well, the fact that we can actually expect. So if we um, well reduce the speed at which we encounter the pothole, um, the forces that are created from the X-flow simulation, so the impact of the water on the tire, are lower. Therefore, the contact force or the reaction force of the road uh, at 50 kilometers per hour it's actually higher than what we have at the 70 kilometers per hour, okay? So what it means is that we don't have um, as big as a loss in contact force um, at 50, then we have a 70 kilometers per hour. Therefore, in this way, we can actually um, try to see which one is the velocity, maximum velocity, um, at which we can expect this specific tire to hydroplane or okay, aquaplaning. Um, it's the same story if we go to the right hand side where we have the uh, displacement of the wheel center. So in that case, again, we have the 50 versus 70 kilometers per hour plot. And again, the displacement is smaller because the forces that we're applying are smaller. Okay. Um, from the plot, of course, we can see the same uh, behavior in the fluid structure uh, simulations. So if I plot the contact um, patch at the end of the simulation, so the contact uh, pressure, um, comparing the 70 kilometers per hour on the left-hand side and the 50 kilometers per hour on the right-hand side of the slide, you clearly see that there is a, a big difference in the, the final contact patch and the contact pressure. And that's why at 50 kilometers per hour, we have a much higher road contact force than what we have at 70 kilometers per hour. Okay, so that's consistent with the plot uh, that we showed earlier. And the same plot um, or a similar plot is what we see in Axelo, where now I'm plotting the VOF, which is the volume of fluid function, uh, which basically identifies which regions are the wetted surface on the simulation. And those are highlighted as red, and whatever is not wetted is the, the blue region, okay? And well, the black one is actually out of the domain of the simulation domain. So what we can see in this uh, specific plot is again that we have well roughly a similar wetted area at the front, uh, but as we can see at 70 kilometers per hour, of course the energy of the water is much greater, and that allows the presentation of the water much deeper into the tire threads and into the patch contact patch than what we have at 50 kilometers per hour. And therefore, again, justifying the fact that the reduction in patch, in the contact patch, is much smaller at 50 than at 70 kilometers per hour. And that's why we have other planning at that velocity and not at 50 kilometers per hour. Okay, so that's the end of the um, presentation on the tire idle planning and how to use this tool to actually um, predict idle planning, but also to predict modification in operating condition and design if we wanted to, like threats design, initial um, water heights, and so on and so forth. And I hope that was clear. If not, please do ask your questions um, in the panel. If we do not have the time to answer all the questions, I'm glad to uh, answer those um, later on via email. So don't be uh, afraid. If you do have questions, uh, type them in the, in the panel. 
Okay, um, so thank, thank you so much. Th thanks a lot, uh, Josephine. This was a very interesting presentation. I had absolutely no idea of Xflow, but uh, after this impressive presentation, uh, I am, let's say, a little bit more knowledgeable than before. Um, thank you. Um, so to the audience, uh, if you have any questions, please use the uh, questions panel, like uh, Giuseppe has uh, said. Or if you want to ask the questions yourself, uh, please uh, write to me and uh, I will unmute you. Um, I have one question to you, uh, Giuseppe. Uh, how is this, uh, how much of this is available? Oh, what are the plans for the 3D experience platform uh, from Xflow? Would you be able to comment on it? Uh, oh, sorry, I, I think you're on mute, uh, Giuseppe. Uh, let me try to unmute you. Uh, looks like you're on. S s okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think <laughs> you were on self mute and I was trying to unmute. <laughs> it was going wrong. No worries. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yes, I was saying um, so far we are focusing a lot on um, the XFlow Power Buy option for the platform. Um, so we already have um, a version, um, I think, in the last release that we had of XFlow 2018X, um, which can basically take advantage of the Power Buy option in the 3dx to load and uh, download from the platform xflow setups and geometries and i think we can upload a few curves and i'm not sure about the results yet probably only picture of some uh, visualization uh, plots um, that's the first stage and we are working hard in order to get that uh, tested and working um, but i do know that there are parallel developments to allow, for example, the co-simulation with Abacus in the platform, um, which is currently uh, not available. Those results that I presented is the actual, well, external ad hoc, let's say, uh, solvers, x and Abacus coupled together. Uh, but there is work being done in order to allow those type of simulation to be executed on the 3DX um, platform, okay. let's say. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, Gerhard Ertel. Um, I will read the question. I also have shared that question with you, Giuseppe, if you want to read it yourself. Okay. okay. The question is, is the coupling scheme always gauss seidel or have other options or other options have been implemented as well? And the follow-up question, the coupling size can be determined by either Abacus explicit as in this application or alternatively by Xflow, is that correct? And another follow-up question: What is the runtime of the co-simulation on how many CPUs, and how long was the step time for the co-simulation step? Okay, yeah, it's glad. I mean, I'm glad that I have the question because there are a few ones to answer. Okay, so the first, it's um, it can be something else than gas seedle. Um, um, I'm not the expert in the co-simulation, but I know there are other options. Um, there is a Newton scheme. Uh, you can ask a problem. Albert is the expert in there. Um, but I think gas seedle is the one that most guarantees that your tools are in sync and structure deformation and loads are corresponding to, um, well, the correct time step, let's say. Um, so I believe the other methods might be faster because you run two tools in parallel, so you don't have to wait in a serial approach, but then it might be more difficult to actually go get the results converged in the echo simulation approach. Um, the other one is about the coupling step. Um, you have different options. So in this case, I'm using a constant time step in order to have the coupling, and I'm fixing the XFlow time step as a coupling um, frequency, uh, but it can be set to um, a different one. And at the end, it depends on the application about your limiting time step. If it's the structural or the fluid side, you can then choose one or the other to be your limiting time step and your negotiation uh, time step, let's say. So for that, um, I think it's most um, dependent on the application that we're doing. And the third one is, okay, how long it took? I think I had actually a backup on that. So that one took 32 hours. 
to run is a 25 million elements explore run uh, 900,000 degrees of freedom in abacus and there was one single a node of our hpc cluster um, here in madrid and the time step i fixed for explore i think is around 5 e minus 6 and there is um if i can remember wrong five times bigger than uh, the abacus time step so abacus has got a smaller time step of the order of e minus seven and xflow has got a bigger time step and that's why i'm using the xflow's uh, time step to to perform the simulation okay so i hope i answer all the points then thank you Giuseppe. um um we go to the next question from matthew knight um he's asking uh, or is commenting. Uh, I guess you can't submit the FSI job using the multi-scale experiment creation uh, app. Yeah, um, the guess is right. Uh, at least not right now. Um, I think that there is a plan of including that in the um, experiment creation app, and I'm not sure about the time frame. I know the um, short to medium terms plan, so it's not going to be a few years. Probably uh, we're talking about months. And I think it all depends also on the uh, deployment of such application. So how many customers are uh, prospect are coming in and trying to uh, take the simulation further? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is from Anthony Bodier. Uh, how is the co-simulation job launched? Is it from Explo or Abacus? Okay, um, so actually we have to launch the three programming separately. So you run Xflow as a separate um, tool, and then basically we'll log um, a command saying, well, I'm actually waiting for the co-simulation engine to give me some input. And then we will launch the Abacus simulation as a standalone, and Abacus as well will wait for the co-simulation engine to give some input, and then we'll actually fire up the co-simulation engine. So we have to run basically the three softwares um, at the same time. And once the co-simulation engine checks the both software are ready, that is gonna be the orchestrator of the co-simulation. So you have this server basically running and telling both Xflow and Abacus when they need the information and sending the information so that it can perform the time step. Um, so from the Xflow side, it's quite straightforward. We just have to enable um, a specific option to say it's a, a structural couple simulation, specify which one is the geometry and hit the run button. Uh, from Abacus, we have to specify what's the coupling surface. And I think there is still some manual work to do on modifying the IMP file, um, but just a really a small one. And then it's all launching three um, executable. Um, we do have a tutorial on how to do that in Xflow. So if you're interested, we have a simple example that guide you through those steps. Okay. That's great. Thanks again. Uh, I think uh, that's all the questions from the audience and we are also doing pretty good at the time. Um, Perfect. So we, there, okay. Uh, I think uh, then uh, we could, um, in the presentation. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Giuseppe. Uh, this was pretty interesting presentation. Um, no, it was my pleasure. And the audience, uh, I, this presentation would be available, uh, the recording would be available in the simula simulation support community in the coming days. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you all uh, in the next uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.